Hey guys, my name's Sinitza. I'm Chinaka. And we're from One Page Away. And in this podcast, we talk about books. So if you're not particularly interested in it, I would seriously consider getting out of this podcast. But maybe stick around. You never know. You might hear something you might like about a book and decide to pick up the book one day. This is major spoiler alert. So if you haven't read the book and our book that we're reviewing today and kind of talking about is called Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. Yeah, so if you haven't read the book, I decide after our intro, you should just go read the book and then come back because we're going to give major spoiler about the book. And we always do a recommendation for um, of wine. Um, and today's wine is Bartunera. Moscato. And it's a white wine based off of our main character, Naomi, who loves white wine. So definitely, if you're going to read the book, have a sip of this wine. And after you pop the um, the corkscrew, please <laughs> finish it because it won't go back Yeah, in. that's our little warning for the wine because once you open it, you got to drink the whole thing. If you're listening from a podcast platform, please um, share it and also leave a review and if you're on youtube go ahead like comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit that post bell notification yeah and comment some books you guys want us to read you might give it a shot all right without further ado let's get into it okay so reading the book you could definitely tell it's a grumpy sunshine trope and like a little bit of enemies to lovers because they're technically enemies from the beginning because Knox, who's the main character, thought that Naomi, who, oh, who also is the main character, was her twin sister. And her twin sister was like wrecking havoc towards like the whole small town. So as soon as Knox saw her, he was just like, what, what are you doing here? Yeah, basically this whole entire, like the first couple of chapters, you'll see Naomi, she's going through a lot because she um, is, she's a runaway bride, basically. Yeah, she's a she, runaway bride. <laughs> she is a runaway yeah, bride. She's a runaway bride. She decides to meet her twin sister who she thinks is evil and no, everybody but, in the town too. Um, Tina, that's the name of the twin sister. Yes. Tina basically told Naomi, come to town, she needs her help. Like This poor girl comes to town, Tina steals her money that she has her laptop and leaves her with her, um, was she, is she 11? How old is she? Um, yeah, I think she was 11, yeah. Her 11 year old daughter in the hotel room. In a broken down motel, all right? Just yeah. think about that. Definitely not parent of the year in my book, but you know. No, absolutely. This book will take you for a ride. Yeah, there's some, like, it was funny. It was way more like, I would say there were some funny parts in it, but there were some parts where I'm like, damn, like, really? Like, this could not get any worse for Naomi. But I loved it. I definitely thought it was a 8 out of 10 out of my scoring. But um, You know what? I think it's an 8 out of 10 for me, too. Like, I thoroughly enjoyed reading this book. Oh, okay. So, you know, like, what I thought about when I was reading the book? You know that song, um, Life is a Highway? Really? I was definitely thinking of that song when I was reading the book, especially like when I found out they're from like a small town and stuff like that. I thought of Little Rascals, Life is a Highway. All right. For me, if you listen to Dan and Shay, uh, it's a little flavor of country. I that their whole entire album, um, I think it's called Good Things. That was really good um, when I was listening to it and it reminded me so much of the book because it reflected some of the main characters. So I'd listen to that too if you are if you really want to get into it. To drink the wine, listen to some music. It's going to be great. And read the book. Yeah, definitely a vibe. All right. So uh, something that I noticed in the book, um, I mean, basically the, throughout the entire book, they uh, mention the sibling rivalry. Yeah, between... there was kind of sibling rivalry between Knox and Nash. And they're, they're the brothers, um, 
main um but most of it was like they're included in almost every scene um from the first chapter that we um that we read you'll be introduced to nash and you'll be um automatically introduced to knox yeah you could definitely tell knox did not like nash being like basically nash is doing his job and knox is just like you know what i could handle it myself i don't need you here like this is basically my woman his grandmother definitely played a big role in getting Naomi and Knox together. You'll see that in the book if you read it. I loved her. She was so funny. And I did not think... Okay, before I was like, who is this old lady like being no so way, grumpy? So <laughs> like, the grandmother and Wayla had like the same personality. Yeah, no, honestly, they really did. I really enjoyed the grandmother's character as well. Yeah, she gave a little funny influence in the book i loved it i want to say for character development i feel like her character wasn't i mean the character was steady throughout the entire book i i didn't feel like she herself went on a journey which makes sense i mean because it's not her story it's Knox's story and it's naomi's story their story together and all of the surrounding characters uh, actually Knox, naomi and wayla's story because they um them three like they all of them had the biggest character development not yeah. to mention tina we see a little bit from her but oh, we see a little <laughs> bit from <laughs> okay all i have to say about tina is that when i think we get rid of her she just brings her <laughs> she, she came right back uh right at the end too when everything was getting back to normal oh when i completely forgot about naomi's <laughs> almost husband oh yeah. comes back in he comes, and he uh, he basically like we find out that she like he was almost like he was abusing her right he was yeah her. yeah he was basically like verbally abusive towards her yeah and, and the way like where she like mentally wasn't as confident as she should have been exactly when she was being with Knox and, and then... he puts her hands on her at the restaurant in the honky tonk when he shows up in the, her small town so yeah that I completely forgot about but can we oh, oh yeah God. the the ex boyf well ex fiance was definitely because we like in the beginning I was like oh okay she's mm -hmm. ran away from like her wedding um i was like just like okay i kind of knew something was up but like when it was confirmed i was like oh, like that like, Knox. after seeing how well Knox treats her it's so hard to like hear about what the ex did exactly like others mistreating her that that's a fact that's a fact um what's it called I do think if she were to make a sequel to this book, um, and these are two characters, well, you, you've you heard of Lucian, but these are two characters um, that have like a history, but it's a mystery. And it's mentioned throughout the book when Lucian enters, it's him and Sloan. And Sloan becomes um, uh, Naomi's, one of Naomi's best friends um, and confidant. Definitely in the yeah. small town. Um, she's definitely friends mm -hmm. with Naomi. She's definitely made her place in Naomi's life. Yeah. And Lucian is already in Knox's life. Because, yeah. I guess... Something him... happened between yeah. them in, like, high school or <laughs> yeah. something. But I definitely think if she were to make another book, it would be about Sloan and Lucian. Oh, for sure. Because yeah. this is definitely book one. And I, I love it when books that have, like, a small town make a series out of from within that small town i go crazy for those books yeah i mean i like small towns too i don't mind small towns um i have a thing for enemies to lovers trope i noticed that about myself because from my books that i have almost all of them are enemies to lovers yeah, and i she never has, knew she has like a stack of enemies to lovers trope I books. never knew that about myself. So next time you're thinking about reading a book, go through your library and see how many books have um, and what type of tropes they have, and notice the pattern. So you'll you'll be able to recognize what you like <laughs> and what you don't like, or or at least what you favor. Because um, I really didn't know that about myself. I definitely knew I loved Grumpy the Sunshine. That's why I definitely love this book. I love me some Grumpy the Sunshine. 
enemies to lovers so once you get towards the end of the book um and i want to just get into uh talk about the overall theme before we kind of get into the nitty-gritty and um really talk about the talk juicy <laughs> stuff about the <laughs> yeah, book okay but basically um she leaves uh lucy le leaves a very nice um kind of letter to her readers at the end um just talking about a uh, fear of opening up and being able to open back up after loss um so um a lot of that i think the book said it all like honestly it it's about Ni Naomi who not only leaves um, somebody at the altar, somebody who she thought she loved and was in a relationship yeah, with. Yeah, this person that she was planning to spend the rest of her life with. Exactly. And so she, not only she loses her sister, her parents are on vacation and she loses um, this guy. And now she's in this brand new town and she's afraid and she has her own insecurities and she's afraid to love the obnoxious um grumpy grumpy man who who makes her go crazy who basically she, sweeps her off her feet without exactly. her noticing at first so i the overall message of this book is fantastic um so i think it's really relatable um and it's it's a good read and i think it's something we could definitely learn from like we don't have to lose someone in death. We could definitely lose someone, like within maybe it's like a friendship or relationship, like anything like that. Or like Naomi when she lost her sister, because they weren't close. Mm -hmm. Like they definitely like had like a drift between them, yeah. and they weren't talking. It was just something like she needed family at that time, and the first person to actually like tell her to like come was her sister but then her sister let her down when... yeah uh, literally automatically betrayed her stole her car stole her, stole her computer her money her savings everything yeah so that's in the very beginning of the book and then like when everybody was in the town were just like call the cops this is not her first go around of like doing something mm -hmm. like that this like Naomi was just like call the cops like they're like she's basically like how could you do that to my sister? You know exactly. what I'm saying? Even when her sister was so horrible to her, she still had a lot of love for her. And she, she at the end of the day, she didn't want her sister to get caught. And you'll see that too in the book, like after her sister kidnaps her, by the way. Kidnaps. Spoiler um, alert. <laughs> she, what's it called? Uh, still lets her sister get, so, like, get away. But yeah, it was definitely very forgiving Naomi was very forgiving with tina she most was. of the book definitely. definitely most of the book especially like even after when she found out tina left her daughter in the hotel room and basically just left her thinking automatically knowing that naomi's gonna take care of her that was just something very forgiving yeah. in my opinion all right let's talk about some juicy bits okay. let's talk about naomi and Knox, please. Okay, okay. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Naomi, Knox, and Nash. Nash. Because this is this is a little the love little triangle. Love action. triangle at some point. <laughs> yeah, at some point. At throughout some the whole point. book. Even after Knox and Naomi got together, uh Nash is over here like, oh, like, I got what what was he? He fell down the stairs? Oh, is no, that what happened? Like he, he didn't he he got shot. He got shot. He got shot. Oh, yeah, yeah he yeah, got yeah. shot. Okay, okay. So yeah, he got shot because um this guy that Tina was involved with and that he was part of the kidnapping as well. This guy, she was basically involved with this mobster um after she ran away and moved away and then came back to kidnap Naomi. She um the guy was part of the people who ended up putting a hit on Nash because he was part of a trial um, for his father, who was the mobster. So it's like a whole, it's, it's not really a big part of the book, but for the most part, that's why Nash, Nash got shot. It was important for that scene exactly. to know why Nash got shot. And then so Naomi, she goes to his apartment and he's like, yeah, like I'm shot. To and take then, care of him. Like, and she's over here like, you, you, you got to change your bandages and things. And this is after Knox and Naomi had slept together. They're basically in a whole Little, relationship They're by basically now. living like a family because they're both taking care of Na Tina's daughter. Yes. Wala. Wayla. Wayla. I, I call her Wayla. 
I like, her let wallet. me know in the comments um, how you guys decided yeah, to pronounce her name. Yeah, definitely let us yeah. know because that's this has been something we've been talking exactly. about. Because <laughs> for me, when I read it I, automatically, I was like, okay, Wayla, like that sounds right, right? I think it's Wala. I don't know. Just like um, Lucian, which is one of their best friends, I think his name is Lucian. I think it's Lucian. <laughs> this is what he said. It's definitely it, it's definitely how you read the book. It's how you pronounce Listen, the name? No, she's an audiobook lover, so I partic I don't like audiobooks. I don't like. I don't really like listening to the books. But this book, so I didn't listen didn't to. Listen to I, I read okay, it. Okay. I read I'm it with my two eyes. No, I, I mean, I know we. So we both read the books. Um, we give ourselves time period to read the books, and we read them, and then um, we try not to talk about them cause to hold in the excitement, you know, to bring it out to you guys, but. But for the most part, she you sometimes listens to audiobooks. Yeah, sometimes so. if I don't have like enough time, I definitely would read would actually listen to the audiobook. But I'm um, curious to see how they would say it in the audiobook. Audiobooks are so like okay, let me know if you guys do listen to audiobooks because it's definitely different from actually reading it. I feel like I'm more involved when I'm listening because like I don't know they explain the sex scenes you don't need to <laughs> whisper that they can hear you please be 18 and up if you're well you don't, you don't, have, to, you don't, you don't have to be a little warning there is for uh, sex in the book sex get out of here there's definitely sex scenes okay so if you're like me and you're not so big on it i'm not really that big on sex scenes um as for me i'm very big she's, exactly she's very scene. big on the spicy little this sex scenes. book for the spice scale it was definitely a three out of five well let's say yeah a three out of five definitely definitely for me i kind of just skip Knox over like and I, naomi I'm... were definitely getting it in all right for a good part of the book <laughs> yo i i just kind of i read it but like i didn't like i was like okay they're having sex like i'm skimming 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 okay good 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 and then I'm like, all right, so we're back in daylight. We're back to um, red business as usual. Like, then I'm like, all right, then oh, I can just we, take my we time. We have to again. definitely talk about this is one of my favorite um, parts of the book was when I think this was the first time they had sex. And then the next morning, that would be your favorite. Her parents oh my basically oh, yeah, came yeah. in and yeah. saw <laughs> like Knox's clothes on the floor and was just like, what's going on here? Like, just picture this like you just had a one night stand, like you the, finally like, did something for best you. sex of your life. And then this man is still naked in your bed, and then you come down still like feeling great and then got a glow on your face and then your parents you, so you get a knock on the door you open it and then there's there are your parents right there who are supposed to you, be on a cruise <laughs> who are supposed to be on a cruise heard that they had um a granddaughter decided to ambush you and then here comes this man walking down the stairs in his boxers like what's going on <laughs> that part was so, that part was that, that was part funny. was so funny. When I say like this book was like definitely had some funny moments. That was definitely a taste of. Oh the yeah. Book. So one part that I liked that I absolutely loved um, was when Ni well Naomi and Knox they were in a big fight, um, and so she goes to work and she works at the Honky Tonk, uh, which is something. It's a it's a bar that he owns actually. So. Uh, she works for him and um yeah you're having <laughs> relationships yeah. while she was working for him he yeah was, yeah so you guys get the type of sex what well, okay, we have okay okay <laughs> first of all she didn't know who she was working for until after and she was gonna quit actually but she did end up anyways that's not important that's not important basically um he she she's about to go on a 15 minute break and he knows this um, and so she's still really mad at him and she's like, hey, like, um, she's going to take her break. And he said, OK, when you do take your take your break, I need you to come to my office um, because there's something that I need um, to, to like tell you or do. And um, and she's like, OK, and he's like, not one minute less or I'm going to come and I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to bring you to my office. She was like, OK, so it's 16 minutes later. 
this man comes walking into the bar she, she sees him they make eye contact and he's like oh um she knows what he's about to do he's walking towards her and he, he's like i warned you i told you i'd do this he picks her up throws her over his shoulder and then she's wearing the short <laughs> jean skirt which is hilarious because everybody's watching this in the restaurant and it's dead silent and then she's freaking out and he is like he like smacks her butt to kind of like cover her um <laughs> uh cover her cover her you know her her privates um to not show the world and then it's just hilarious that scene and when you read it it's just like wow like this man really did that that was one of my favorite scenes all right could we talk about how rich Knox was because he won the lottery yes, yes he did that blew my okay there's some things that honestly kind of blew my mind about Knox he's like 40 something yeah, the age yes Let's talk about it, okay? Because I don't know about you guys, but when I was reading the book, I wasn't in, I wasn't envisioning a 40-year-old man. Like there's nothing wrong with him being 40. There's nothing wrong with with, you know, none of that. It's just when I was reading it and how the author was writing him, I thought he was in his early to mid 30s. Um, so when I found out that he was 40, I was so surprised. Um, I mean, that I guess that would that would um, I guess, account for his um, his wealth in terms of like his businesses, I yeah. guess. Yeah. And how well run they were. But for the most part, I was shocked to find out that he was 40. Yeah, that was very, I was, I think the one that shocked me the most was that he was rich. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, like. He's rich. He won the he lottery. Was, he was definitely <laughs> taking care of Naomi and Wala. He was taking very care good. Of Wayla. <laughs> <laughs> he was taking care of a lot. He was basically taking care of this whole, whole entire yeah, town. Yeah, and um, things we never got over. It was such a good book, guys. Honestly, yeah. well, at this point in the podcast, those who haven't read and listened to it, even after our spoiler warning. Go read this book honestly like get into it y'all because it would it was definitely a good read like it's, it wasn't my favorite over the top like had me going through my emotions i mean i definitely um had to like put the book down for a second and then go back to it when something crazy happened that i wasn't expecting but um like when tina came back i was like what? Yeah, when tina came back definitely. yeah but definitely just a reminder, you can find the book on Amazon, Kindle Unlimited, and if you do want to listen to it, it's definitely on audiobooks. I suggest it's definitely a good listen when you're driving to work, hitting the gym, something to listen to. And it's such a quick book too, I didn't take that long to read it either. Yeah, it, takes, it took me like four days, right? Yeah. It was definitely a good. A read. little long though. It was like nine hundred pages. But, yeah, but that's but because, that's yeah, that's not nothing yeah. crazy. Um, but yeah, like highly, highly recommend. Um, we'll be doing um a lot more books and like like we said, please drop down some recommendations. Yeah, leave us some recommendations for wines too. Absolutely. As you can see, well, if you guys are watching from YouTube, see that I've been sipping on my wine the whole time. Oh, it is so I, good. I've been I've been sipping on mine definitely, too, not as much as her, but it's definitely good. a vibe for the book. I this wine makes me so giddy and yeah, it's very sweet. I love it. Very definitely sweet. reminds me of small town living. All right. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next podcast. And Yeah, stay tuned yeah. for our next book. It's definitely something worth listening about. Exactly. All right. This is One Page Away signing out. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that, but bye, guys.